So we'll start this new MOOC course on nature and properties of materials uh, and we will start the first module of this uh, particular course that is based on the structure of materials. So I am Ashish Garg, I am a professor at the Department of Material Science and Engineering at IIT Kanpur and following are my contact details in case anybody needs to contact me. So uh, as the course outline has mentioned that this course is uh, useful for UG and PG students of nearly all backgrounds even those studying materials and metallurgical engineering can do that. So uh, the recommended reading material for the course is uh, I have listed three books here. Uh, first is the book by Professor V. Raghavan which is material science engineering a first course uh, which has nearly all the elements of material science uh, and engineering at least the basics if not in detail. Then second good book is by Callister which is material science engineering uh, again it is an introductory book and third book is actually a four volume set by John Wolf uh, structure and properties of materials by Wiley it is a very old book perhaps not available very frequently uh, it has uh, but the first volume is related to the structure of materials so it is a it is a very good book if somebody wants to get into a little bit of details. So let us see why uh, you know um, all of us know that materials are very important our civilizations are named after materials and uh, in the development of humankind materials have played a very important role and that is why we have ages like bronze age, stone age, you know uh, iron age and so on and so forth and currently we have silicon age or electronics age. So uh, as we know materials are very important they have been important throughout the history of mankind uh, is basically you can say history of materials and uh, if, you, if you go back to our ancestors they were earlier using stones and then they started inventing materials and strangely precious metals came before many of the materials and uh, followed by uh, development of copper based alloys which bronzes various bronzes if you, if you go back to Indus Valley civilization uh, you see a lot of bronzes and brasses. And then of course the uh, advent of iron uh, gave rise to substantial advantages to the human beings because our iron was a stronger material it could be it could be used not only in uh, warfare but lot of other practical things. Uh, it made the hunting easier as compared to stones and uh, other objects. So and if you go back to if, if you come if we come closer to our times. Uh, since past 200 years or so the advent of electronics or electricity has uh, led to uh, materials based on let us say electronic age silicon based materials uh, because of which we are uh, utilizing all the devices which are basically silicon based. So uh, as we stand now perhaps no technological invention would have been possible like the, all the gadgets that we have all the technologies that we have all the healthcare devices we have all the automotive devices that we have they, put, they probably would not have been possible without uh, uh, concurrent development of materials. So materials in that sense are very important for us and that is why it is important to study the science and engineering of materials. So in this course we will it is an introductory course we will we'll talk about um, the basics of materials which will help you to advance further in this discipline. So if you look at the historical perspective uh, you know uh, going back to 10,000 BC uh, man was using things like stone, straw brick, uh, wood skins in fact uh, in strangely gold came quite early and then after 5,000 BC or so uh, man started developing potteries which are based on ceramics and glasses, uh, composites was used in paper for example polymers and elastomers were used in wood you can say wood is example of polymer and then uh, copper bronze iron they came uh, before before 0 AD uh, in Indus Valley civilization and various other civilizations and then comes the iron age which expands the use of metals because of advent of iron uh, and then at the same time and also kept using things like uh, ceramics and glasses in the form of cement refractories because they needed to build houses and mansions and palaces and so on and so forth and as you keep moving down the uh, down 1900s 
you can see that iron gave way to cast iron followed by steels, steel was far better material as compared to uh, iron alone and then uh, development of alloy steels which in fact improved the steel. So, this is basically age of steel as one can see. Now, steel uh, was very good, but man invented even other materials which are even lighter and stronger. So, that is where uh, things like uh, aluminum alloys, titanium alloys, zirconium alloys, all those came into being which were lighter and stronger and super alloys which could work at high temperatures. And then after uh, you can see that 1960s or so, this curve start going upwards which means metals are slowly shrinking in their domain and there are other materials which, which start expanding. For example, new ceramics come into picture. Uh, uh, earlier we were limited to stone, you know, glass, cement, refractory etc. Uh, 60s gave rise to pyro ceramics which means ceramics which could be used at high temperatures, toughened ceramics and, and their, their, their uh, importance has increased over a period of time. And man also started developing a lot of synthetic polymers uh, and these synthetic polymers gave rise to array of applications which are basically polymer based because polymer is a light material. And then composites also by mixing stone and by mixing ceramics and polymers or metals and polymers and metals and ceramics, man made these composites which have, uh, which have properties which are different to, uh, which are, which are compromised of both let us say metal and ceramic. So, it is a, it's a bit of mix of both of them. So, you can see that uh, the, the, the arena of materials has changed dramatically as a function of time and today uh, 1990s for example, somewhere around 1950s let us say uh, uh, advent in the vacuum technology processing technologies gave to the manufacturing of silicon. So, today we stand in the age of silicon and perhaps today is the age of molecular engineering as well because we are looking at materials and using materials at the molecular scale. Uh, very, very thin films, 2D, 2D structures uh, such as graphene and molydicylicide etc. are being used, uh, are being studied at least if not used. Uh, so, we can say that we are study, we are standing on the, uh, at a completely different era of materials which is very different from what we had earlier. But nevertheless, the message is we would not, we would not have reached where we are today if it was not for the materials that were invented over, a, over our course of development. So, uh, so, if we classify these materials which are basically most of the engineering applications, there are few categories in which we can classify. So, first one of course, that comes to our mind is metals and alloys. Uh, metals and alloys, uh, so copper is for example, a metal, nickel, brass which is alloy of copper and zinc. You can have iron carbon alloys which are nothing but steel and cast irons. So, anything copper, nickel, brass, bronze, iron, iron alloys, uh, zirconium, titanium, aluminum, all of them are metals and you can make alloys of them by mixing them with various elements and they have very good properties. Metals typically are very ductile, uh, they are also reasonably strong and they can be used in applications starting from low temperature to high temperature. Uh, so, and they are very ductile, you can, you can make them very easily. So, these are some characteristics and they are also electrically and thermally conducting. That is why metals are used extensively uh, in our, in our uh, world. Second category of uh, materials is ceramics and glasses. Ceramics examples are for example, aluminum oxide, silicon oxide, silicon carbide, magnesium oxide, titanium oxide, all these oxides, nitrides, carbides basically happen to be ceramics and they are different from metals because they have, they are much more brittle, uh, they have, uh, but they are very strong. They have uh, high strength or you can say high modulus, but they are also very brittle. So, they cannot absorb the shock. So, if you, if you, if you, if you subject them to impact loading, if you drink in a, if you drink tea in a uh, glass cup, you know that if, if it breaks, it shatters. Whereas metal doesn't do that, so which means it's brittle. But there are certain applications in which ceramics are important because ceramics are high temperature materials, and they also have low coefficient thermal expansion. So things like refractories, bricks, and kilns, ceramics are very important. Cutting tools, they also have high hardness, so they could be very important there. Metals on the other hand are typically used as structural materials as bridges, houses, rods, automobiles, anything which is which has to be strong ductile yet ductile and tough you use a metal uh, depending upon the temperature and strength that you require. Third category which is uh, uh, if you if you go beyond wood and natural polymers is the polymers and elastomers which are very light material they have low elastic modulus, but they are very flexible and you can make extremely thin structures, very light structures out of them. 
they mostly contain light elements like carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, etc. So, examples could be polyethylene, which is used just like a plastic bag that we use on, uh, on daily basis. PVC, I mean, you must have heard of PVC, PVC is polyvinyl chloride, which is used for ducting, you know, piping and all that. It is a strong material, but it is light and it does not corrode. And another advantage of polymers is that they do not corrode. So, metals, for example, if you make a metal pipe and your sewage flush goes through them, they corrode, but polymers do not corrode. So, they are light, they are easy to make, they do not corrode. They cost less. Uh, you have another example is rubber used in tires and all that. Silicones, a lot of silicones is used in variety of applications. These polymers and elastomers are another class of materials uh, which are very different to metals and ceramics in the sense that they are not so strong, but they are very light. They are very, uh, they have high flexibility, and they are very tough. They could be very tough. And you can make things from them rather easily without going to high temperature processing of metals and ceramics. Uh, so, polymers have made our life easier. I mean, plastic bag, for example, has made our life easier because things do not go bad. And then, fourth class of the materials is called as composite and hybrid materials, which is basically a mixture of the above. So, you can mix a metal and a ceramic, make a metal matrix composite. So, you utilize the properties of both metals and ceramics. Similarly, you can make a polymer matrix composite, you mix polymer and ceramics together. So, you use the advantage of polymer as well as ceramic and you can mix uh, polymer and metal as well. So, basically a combination of the two or three classes of these materials, different, different materials will give you composites and they have their own advantages. For example, tennis rackets now that we have today is basically a composite or uh, many of the parts in the automotive applications or um, aircraft applications, wherever you require high specific strength or high specific modulus, you predominantly tend to use polymers, uh, composites because composites have high strength per unit weight. Similarly, they have high modulus per unit weight and, and that is what is useful in certain applications. So, so these are certain applications you can see. Uh, you see this uh, plier for holding things is, you can see the head of this is made of metal. Uh, it is made of metal because it has to be strong, it should not be brittle, but it should, it should provide you a good grip, it should not yield. So, it is made of steel typically, but there are a lot of other applications of metals, you use them for making bridges, they are, they are used as a construction material, your cars are, a lot of parts in cars are made of uh, uh, metals, steels, aluminum, copper. Uh, ceramics, you can see that ceramic piece here, uh, white piece, this is basically an insulator, ceramics is an insulator, so it insulates the uh, uh, parts of let us say spark plug. Uh, ceramics is uh, ceramics also th uh, thermal and electrical insulators. So, they also provide insulation from uh, thermal and electrical. So, for example, on electrical poles you see white uh, ceramic pieces, they are nothing but ceramic insulators. Polymers, you can see that these are the applications of polymers. You can, you can make mugs, you can make uh, plastic bags, you can make pipes, etcetera. A lot of medical devices are made of polymers. Elastomers, for example, rubber, this is a rubber tire. So, uh, polymers and elastomers are uh, sometimes put in same class, sometimes they are put in different class because of various reasons we will explain later. And then you have another part of ceramics is glasses. Uh, glasses are typically transparent, uh, so you can make them, you can, you, you can make bottles out of them, pottery, glassware, a lot of other applications are lenses, they are all made of glasses. And something in between you can see is the hybrid, for example, this is a ski uh, base. Uh, tennis rackets, uh, airline, uh, aircraft components, uh, automotive components, they are all made of by mixing these materials to make them light yet strong. Okay, so, uh, uh, let us, if we go to the next slide, uh, so these are certain applications as I explained to you before. Uh, so, ceramics have, and just to summarize, they have high stiffness, they have high elastic modulus, they are hard, they have high abrasion resistance. They have a high, a good high temperature strength, which means they hold their strength uh, up to higher temperatures. Higher temperatures typically will mean, will mean above 1000 degree centigrade. They have reasonably good corrosion resistance, but they are brittle. Okay? This is a major problem with ceramics, because they cannot absorb any shock. Um, glasses on the other hand are hard, they are corrosion resistant, they are electrically insulating, they are transparent. So, these are some good attributes of glasses very similar to what you have in ceramics, but they are also brittle. So, this is again a problem with glass. 
polymers, uh, polymers have uh, low density, they are light because they are made of light elements like carbon, nitrogen, oxygen and so on and so forth, hydrogen. Uh, they can be easily shaped by processes like molding etcetera. They have high strength per unit weight. Uh, so, as such their strength is not very high, but if you look at in the perspective of density they are very strong. They lack stiffness which means they have low elastic modulus, but they are very flexible. They can you can you can go, you can make plastic works to large strains. So, they can they can withstand large strains, but their properties are highly sensitive to temperature because they soften with temperature their melting points are lower. So, plastics are typically not used for applications where you wherever you have to subject a material to high temperature. So, plastics are typically suitable for temperatures lower than uh, 50, 100 degree centigrade 50 or 100 degree centigrade depending on the type of polymer. Elastomer a cousin of polymers, it again lacks stiffness, it has low modulus uh, several times lower than metals uh, basically rubber. Uh, it has this wonderful ability to retain its shape after being stretched yeah, and you can provide very large strains to a rubber or elastomer and they are relatively strong and tough as compared to polymer. Okay. Uh, and they are used for things like you know these tires and all that. So, uh, similar kind of applications wherever you require a stronger polymer you use um, elastomer. But one thing one difference between polymer and elastomer is polymers can be melted and reused. Elastomer cannot be melted if you melt them they decompose. Okay. So, typically a elastomer decomposes whereas, polymer does not decompose. And then we come to metals and hybrids. Metals they are very tough they have high fracture toughness. Uh, this is a parameter called as KIC which is a representative of fracture toughness which we will probably see later in uh, some other course. They have high stiffness, they have high elastic modulus, they are very ductile. Uh, depending upon the composition processing uh, what is what is the metal made of whether it is iron based, aluminum based, copper based or nickel based they can give you strengths which are highly varying. You can you can achieve strengths from 50 mega Pascal to 1000 mega Pascal even higher depending upon the composition and processing. So, it is very good uh, to have a metal because you can engineer its property depending upon what you want depending uh, and which can be varied by changing the composition and processing conditions. They are typically thermally and electrically conductive that is why they are used in applications wherever you require high electrical conductivity and high thermal conductivity. However, most metals are reactive, they tend to oxidize or they tend to react with environment uh, and that is why most metals have low corrosion resistance. So, wherever the atmosphere is aggressive in nature you have acids or you have alkaline uh, environment or you have sludges, uh, sievers, you cannot make them out of metal because they will corrode um, as a function of time. So, this is this is a drawback of metal. Okay. And then we have hybrids. Uh, another thing about metals is metals are typically heavy. With the exception of aluminum, titanium, uh, most metals tend to be heavy. So, iron has a density of about 8, gold is very heavy, silver is also heavy, nickel is heavy. All of these metals tend to be heavy. Uh, most of the engineering metals I am talking about, I mean, there are some other metals which may be light, but they are not very useful. So, most of the engineering metals, with the exception of copper and uh, aluminum and titanium and magnesium, they tend to be heavier. And metals are typically made by melting root uh, once you made them. And then we have hybrids uh, which are which tend to be expensive because you have to process them in a specific manner by mixing the different classes of materials. Since you use different materials they are not very easy to shape and join because metals have different joining characteristics, ceramics have different joining characteristics, polymers have different joining characteristics and they all are processed at different temperatures. As a result it is very difficult to make a good shape out of poly out of composite and to join them. So, processing is little difficult in case of hybrids. However, you can achieve very good properties dependent upon the combination of materials. So, if you want for example, tennis racket what is what is that you require in tennis it should be light, it should be strong and it should not yield. Okay? It should it should have it it should it, it should have a so when when the when the tennis racket hits it should flex a little bit, it should be able to flex a little bit without deforming permanently or breaking. So, that is achieved by making a composite which is let us say carbon carbon composite or so polymer carbon composite. So, depending upon what you mix and how you mix and what kind of shape and size of materials are you can tailor their properties extensively. So, they typically give you high uh, specific 
strength or modulus which are required basically in automotive and aircraft applications. So, these are certain examples of materials. Uh, so, now let us look at uh, what is that which makes materials uh, important or how can you engineer them. So, this is called as materials tetrahedron which consists of four parts. One is the structure of materials and this is what the, this, this particular uh, lecture series is all about structure. But structure is a very wide connotation, there are various meanings of structure. So, structure for example, could be, uh, I will tell you a little later. So, a structure is one thing, second is properties, properties could be mechanical property, thermal property, electronic property, optical property, various properties. Third is processing, how do you make a material, how do you process a material to bring it to a particular shape and size that you want. And then performance, performance is related to the applications that you are looking for, for example, what is the application. So, if I uh, go a little further, so applications for example, could be structural application like bridges, uh, electronic applications like the gadgets that you are carrying, uh, let us say the mobile phone or display or LED or transportation which could be train or car, refractory applications like furnaces or space application, you know we, we are sending uh, spaceships to the space. So, they use variety of materials which have very different properties and different uh, uh, functionality. So, how do you make them? There are various methods by which you can make materials, you can make, you can do powder processing, you can start from a powder and then make a particular component or you can start by a melting root which has to be then casted. After casting you may provide some more mechanical treatment like you can force them or you can roll them depending upon the material and uh, what you want to do with that there are variety of processing methods that are available. And then we have properties which are mechanical which could be mechanical property, electrical property, magnetic property, thermal property. So, question is how to measure them uh, or uh, how to tailor them. And then we have structure at the end, structure of a material is looked at various scale. One is the macro structure, macro structure just like looking at tree, if you cut a tree you see something with the naked eye ok, that is macro structure. Something if you want to look at it uh, in, in, in little bit more details as to see how different layers are, is there any porosity, is there any crack uh, which is not visible with the naked eye, you look at the micro structure, then you go under the microscope. And if you are not happy with looking at the micro structure, if you want to understand the structure even better, then you have to go to atomic structure which means you, you really have to go to very, very fine techniques and then you have to do some modeling as well. And if you want to understand even the atomic structure, the, the, the properties which, which are emanated in a material, then you look at the electronic structure. Electronic structure is typically a modeling based exercise. So, a structure of a material depends upon the length scale, uh, what you are talking about. It could be macro structure, it could be micro structure, it could be atomic structure electronic structure. So, you can see the length scales decrease as you go from macro to micro to atomic to electronic. And it is the combination of these four attributes of materials, structure, processing, performance and properties which determine the potential of a material. So, for a given application you need to optimize the properties and you need to optimize the process. Process has to be simple, cheap and easy to make properties should be according to the application and properties are affected by structure, structure is affected by processing. All of these things are connected to each other and that is why it is called, it is very important to understand this material tetrahedron. If you have any questions in between, you can. So, uh, so this is basically early summary of the uh, content that we are talking about. Uh, Materials evolution as we saw is concomitant uh, or in synchronous with the development of humans. Uh, we could not probably have developed any of the te technologies that we use today without the uh, development of materials, successive development of new and new materials. Today with the understanding of science, physics and chemistry, we are able to classify these materials into various classes, uh, metals and alloys, ceramics, plastics polymers and elastomers uh, in that category and hybrids or composites. Now, the question that arises is what is the difference between these four? Why should we categorize these in, uh, in, in materials in these four categories? I mean I showed you the uh, very basic reason is because of properties, 
but there is something more fundamental other than the properties only and that origin of these uh, lies basically in the um, bonding of these materials how they are bonded okay so what i'll do is that i will just give you a brief uh, introduction to the bonding of materials before we uh, look into the structure of materials because bonding is what determines the structure of these materials okay so uh, so before we move on to the discussion on bonding uh, i'll just show you uh, how the structure of materials is important so this is the structure of materials at various length scales so if you look at a tree for example this is the cross section of a tree you can see these rings uh, in the in the bark of a tree so this is something which is visible with the naked eye so this is called as a macro structure which means the length scales which are beyond the resolution of eye so uh, anything which is more than um, so eye can resolve for example a hair okay a hair is a few microns in size so uh, anything which is bigger than that is basically a mic macro structure something uh, which you can resolve with your own eye if you want to look at into details of this then you need to magnify it so then you put this material into a microscope that microscope could be a optical microscope it could be a scanning electron microscope which can help you resolve things down to uh, microns and few hundred nanometers so this is where you see for example these are the fibers or pores uh, aligned in certain certain fashion which is not visible by naked eye because the length scale here so this length scale here could be um, here this could be a few microns or uh, sub micron this is not resolvable by i and then you need to put it in, put it in, in 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 so so less than let's say um uh, few hundreds of micrometer you will call it macro micro would be few these are very loose definitions not very specific definition few nanometers to few microns this would be a mic, uh, microstructure so this is basically naked eye this is optical or scanning electron microscope okay and then we have third category if you really want to go to higher uh, level of details then you can look at the structure of a material at more uh, at nanoscope or let's say atomic level so here this is a transmission electron microscope image of a material you can see that you are able to resolve things down to 0.5 nanometer uh, the scale bar you can see is about 10 nanometer so uh, so you are able to resolve things down to one, uh, half of 1 nanometer so this is called as nano or atomic structure by proper careful imaging you can also uh, try to look down the atomic arrangement uh, in a material and if you want to understand this even better then you need to do what we call as atomic simulations which tell you about the atomic structure of the materials now these are basically atomic structures which can which further go to atomic slash let's say electronic and these are so this is basically done by tem so this let's say is uh, less than um, a micron uh, one micron and uh, typically up to uh, down to uh, about uh, half a nanometer and if you want to go down that below this you cannot do microscopy you need to do simulations so this is by simulations or modeling so these are the four levels of structures which are present in a material and it is very important to understand these structures because how they how the structures are made what is the distribution of various things what is the size of various things what is their morphology how they are oriented and various other things they will uh, determine what the properties of a material are and what the and, and and those properties will determine the applicability for a particular um, application and this structure is controlled by basically the processing so that is why i showed you the tetrahedron which is very important so in the in the next lecture we will now we will talk about the uh, 
we will first talk about the bonding of materials just to have a bit of idea about what the bonding is and how the bond how that particular bonding is related to the classification of materials that we did and then we will move on to the uh, so uh, in terms of st studying the structures we will start uh, from the smallest scale first and then go to the largest scale later on so thank you